Hi guys, Amy here. As you know, I love wacky toy-only items and that includes the massive variety of toy-only Sentai and Power Rangers mechs. So that's why I want to make this video. But we are only looking at Zod and mechs. I'm not looking at all the toy exclusive power modes, vehicles, armors, there's way too many of those and I feel they deserve their own video. So, let's start with Pink Shagun Zod from the third season of Power Rangers. Due to Bandai America having some weird brain out about keeping the iconic details and formation from the Dino Megazord, they decided to take white Kark and turn it pink. The worst issue is that it kinda works. Pink is just a nice color that completes the colder aesthetics, like all the silver and gun metal bits hugging around the pink body. The issue is, can we call it a toy exclusive zone? That's what the source of my information does, Power Rangers Wiki. But technically, it does appear in the show, thanks to the power of USING TOYS AS PROPS The production team fused a Shogun Megazord with a 2 year old Titanus, who for some reason still has the Dragon Zord chest piece, making the Shogun Ultra Zord. It never moves on screen, just drives forward while blasting lasers, it never shares the screen with the monster it's fighting, but here, this is the pink Shogun Zord. It's technically canon! Next up we have Silver Titanus Carrier Zord and... I'm sorry but this just looks brutal. Bandai America just took the Dinosaur Titan and skinned him of all the animal bits just to glue in a shuttle piece. This is brutal and kind of makes me sad. Especially if you compare it with the concept art, I would much more like to see Titanus turn into a space dinosaur rather than just being like a halfless biomechanical automaton shell of its former being. At least I can say it's creative. Next up we have the Astro Galactic Megazord, a golden black red echo of Astro Megazord. Normally I'm a sucker for black repaints of giant robots, but I don't know why, maybe the internet photos just don't do it justice, maybe my eyes are just broken, but on all pics he seems more green than black. If not the golden mouth, I would just think this is the normal Astro Megazord, left too long in the sun. There's not even like some quirky lore or stories to get it extra points in my head. Next up we have two X-Ray Zords toys from the Lightspeed Rescue toy line. All they are are just the Rescue Megazord and Robo Racer cast and translucent glittery plastic. No lore, just a cool design for a little toy. After that we have the Ultimus Megazord. Ultimus Megazord begins a bit of a trend with toy-only Power Rangers Megazord by being a Sentai mech that was movie exclusive. Originally released in Japan as Hyakuju Gattai Go Knight to promote the Hyakuju Sentai Go Ranger, the Fire Mountain Roars movie, Go Knight is a combination of Go Eagle, Go Shark, Go Tiger, Go Bison, Go Elephant and the movie exclusive Gao Kong. In the movie, Gao Kong is the guardian of the island which was visited by the Gao Rangers, has the special ability to summon towers of flames and use flaming trees as clouds. The Oster toy is similar in its design. It has the Shark Zord and it's the repaint of the Kong Zord, but for some reason it has the Bison Zord permanently stuck in legs mode, which are also purple. You also don't get the Tiger and Elephant, which would have been nice. Apparently Elephant Wild Zord didn't get a toy in the Western toy line. Instead you get Soul Bird. That's a really random Zord to list. Now thinking, why does PR Wiki list Ultimus? but it doesn't list the Red Kong Zord. Ninja Khan! Oh, he is for sure a quirky thing. He's described as a truly mysterious Zord from the Wind Academy. And that's it. He's a result of Bandai still having the ninja mold and them thinking western kids wouldn't buy just a pack of Zords. So he was sold in a set with the Ram Hammer, Turtle Mace and this wacky catapult. The release toy is a red and gold little of Ninja that replaces his head with a more streamlined serious face and changes the ninja symbol into the Wind Academy crest. Five years later, he got re-released in Jungle Fury toy line as a Disney store exclusive under the name Legends Ninja Store Megazord, sadly missing some paint application. And on February 1st, 2022, Hasbro releases him in the Retro Megazord line as a retail of the ninja. I just love that no matter what happens, Ninja Con somehow claws back to the toy shelves. All swag, all splendor and no story. And as much as I want him to get some lore, I love that the idea of a ninja so mysterious that even we know nothing about him. Next up we have the Arctic Pterazord. 
a toy only addition to the Replicant Zord. Replicant Zord is an evil clone of the Thundersaurus Megazord that debuted in the episode A Test of Trust. It was a giant, brutal beast, creating from the Carnazord and Cosmozord. In the show and Japan only movie, it's shown as a massive, hulking monster, a personification of the Ice Age that will freeze anything in its way. And when they released it as a toy in the West, Who in Bandai America design team decided that Ah yes, let's do a lizard that has the colors of paprika! I know Bandai America has some weird hide boner for purple toys, rest in peace past Lafazaurus. But what did they change all the purple to red and after that they decided to add this bell pepper green pterosaur, it's awful! Ugh. Next up with the Blast Runner, a pretty interesting case since this Zord does have on-screen footage, but only in Japan. Blast Buggy is one of the auxiliary mechs that Deca Rangers used in the movie Tokuso Sentai Deca Ranger the movie Full Blast Action. As Deca Rangers fought with Vodka, one of the Algonian gas drinkers, they get surrounded by an army of mechanical tanks, as suddenly Deca Brick arrives with the Blast Buggy. He changed the buggy into the Blast Mode and combines it with Deca Ranger Robo to easily defeat Vodka and his tanks. Even though this vehicle was piloted by Deca Brick on screen, it's more associated with Mary Gold, the Deca Gold Ranger, since she also debuted in this movie. But you know, the reason we are talking about here is that even though it doesn't appear in the show, it was released as the Blast Runner in the Space Battle set of the Power in this toy line. It's still the Japanese mold, it can do all the formations and combination. It was even mentioned in the Power Rangers RPG sourcebook, where it stated that if this Zord were to have a user, it would be Cat Manx. As we all know, this never happened on screen. Apparently, SPD showrunner Gregor Arondwitz did get the Decalendar movie footage, but it was so late in production cycle that he didn't have time to use it. Next up, we have the Micro Animal Zord sets. And yes, I feel they are just hilarious. Who design team just sat down and said, Ah yes, let's take the animal, mysticism and martial arts series and let's turn them into vehicles! I don't know if this fully counts since we technically see these swords in the show, but not in vehicle modes. We have car versions of the Jungle Pride Megazord, Army vehicle versions of the Jungle Masters Zords with a helicopter back, submarine shark, and a tank elephant. Like, can you imagine Master Fant driving a tank? And we also have a bike version of Jared's Lion Zord with these two little bike companions in the, in the form of a leopard and a puma. And as the Army Master Zord looks a bit awkward, the feline bike Zord actually looks pretty cool, and it wouldn't look that much out of place in like RPM or something. Continuing with the toy Zords of the Spirit Rangers, the toy line got a Beast Master Megazord, a really cool toy that combines the Spirit Zords of the Masters with the earlier scene Puma and Leopard. It's a really cool design. True, it's a bit cheap in its production, but I can imagine that's a suit. And I like that we get to answer to like a what if Spirit Ranger Zords combined themselves. There were plans to retool it into the Jungle King Megazord. Elephant would become the Mammoth, Bat would be turned into a Hawk, Normal Shark would become a Hammerhead, and the Puma and Leopard would have been turned into a Lynx and a Wolf. Sadly, all of these Zords were cancelled. I would still love to see some fan art based on these Zords, since even if you don't see them on screen, you can pretend that some other members of the Order of the Claw had these as animal spirits. Next up we have the Ultimate Megazord. It's a similar case to the Blast Buggy, Geki Rintoja appeared in the Geki Ranger movie and a special episode, but those scenes were never adapted in the Jungle Fury. <laughs> Leaving the combinations of Pride Megazord with Chameleon and Lion Zord, just a thing you could see in the toy multipack. Another Jungle Fury Zord I want to mention is the Claw Cannon Zord. This mech, based on the Jaguar, was part of some toy exclusive multipack. I just want to applaud the genius at Bane who decided to simply stick a free little peg and a gun barrel onto the normal Cat Zord mold, give it the Jungle Pride Megazord a giant claw cannon. Before we get to the Power Rangers RPM, let's remember that this video also talks about the Sentai side of things. The toy line of Engine Sentai Go Onja introduced to us many different multicolored redecos of engines but only engine Skydor is described as a new character. From my research, Skydor was a lucky draw toy, apparently only 50 were made, 
and we can confirm that two of these belong to Taka from Kotetsu Toys, who got them in 2022 as a gift from his wife. I really want to thank you for letting me use some footage of your Skydo. Link to his store and Twitter will be in the description and pinned comment. Skydo is a wide red echo of Speedo, who instead of having a number on his side, has a S. Sadly, we don't have any description of his personality or who he is, and if we do, then Power Rangers Wiki doesn't have it listed. But since it's just a radical of Speedo, we can take his place in any official combination. As Japanese people were doing their best to get Skydo, the West got... a Toyota crossover. Hmm, I wonder what multi-million dollar franchise came out around that time, making licensed cars dealers want to sell transforming robot toys. Hmm. We got two diet transformers that turn to licensed Toyotas. We have a Toyota Camry sedan that turns into Engine King Eaglezord, who for some reason is named Engine King Eaglezord on PR Wiki, and Chrome Prowler Tigerzord that turns into a fucking Prius. I don't know why, but I find it so funny. Like, imagine a Power Ranger in this post apocalyptic world of RPM riding a Prius into a battle. <laughs> Also, let's put a candle on the grave of the cancelled Toyota Tundra, Blue Storm Elephant Zod. You look so quirky and I'm so sad you got shelved. West even got a little exclusive combining Microzod, named Torque Megazod, armored vehicle inspired Panther Zod, who forms the chest and head, motorcycle based Fox Zod, which forms the legs, and Condor Zod, the Condor race car, which forms the arms. And wait, to be honest, this looks pretty cool. The designs are simplistic, but from what I remember, the toys were like the size of a fist. Another toy exclusive Zod we got were little bonus Zods to be released with the mini combining Zods line. High Octane Zod contained this cute frog, Valve Max has a snake, and Torque got this mega cute cat Zod. These little bonus Zods could even combine their own mega Zod. No joke, this is mega cute and creative. If any fanfic writer is watching this video, I would love to see either a Power Rangers or Go On Their Fanfiction that introduced them as new engines. The Micro Zod toy line also had a UK exclusive release of Engine Shogun Mega Zod. This is for sure a surprise since the Go On Their movie was never adapted. I didn't expect Bandai to even think about Engine Dai Shogun. The UK release of Mac Megazord, Pyro Max Megazord, and Engine Shogun Zord also came with four extra Microzords that form additional accessories. Mac has a bird like jet, Palamax has a manta ray, and Engine Shogun has a space shuttle. Next up, we have the Power Rangers Samurai toy line, which gave us a spider mode for the light Zord. We also got a retool of the claw Zord as a scorpion creature, and it was promoted as a Zord. It was released in a set with Decker. I really like the idea of retooling Zords into monsters. It's a cool way to release Zord-sized bodies without doing too much new molding. Next up we get the Zeo Racer Zord in the Power Rangers Super Mega Force storyline. This toy was probably made since the West didn't have a counterpart to the O-Rangers special power, since the Super Mega Force Bazooka origins were different. The toy itself is a recall of the Delta Runner, changing it from a science fiction car into a tank-like ram, based on the Red Battle Zord. Next up we have the dark version of Cure Eugene. It was a premium Bandai release of Gabutera, Stegochi, and Dritzera. Do you remember my comment about the Galaxy Megazord? This is how you do a black and gold repaint. Mwah! Gabutera has directly appeared in the Kiryuja vs. Go Buster movie. Next up we have the Dino Charge Zords, aka Peak of Bandai America. The American team took the Dinoscus, Ammonite, and Archelon and gave them fully original molds that have their own unique Dino Charger gimmicks and can combine to form their own Megazords. They also gave Oviraptor a full-sized form as a retool of the Raptor Zord. Dinosicus forms a pair of clawed gloss, mimicking the armor given to the Rangers. Ammonite can roll out its shell and form either an arm or a shoulder cannon. Archelon can shoot out its spiky shell like a buzzsaw. And Oviraptor's tail can turn into a crossbow. I love these toys. Some of that Bandai America must have really loved dinosaurs, cause these four robots, they make me want Dino Charge Megazord, even though I already own Cure Eugene. Also, the Dino Charge Toyland had a bunch of these little guys. Officially, they're all referred to as Zords, but... Nah, I I'm not calling them that. True, they are small robots, but they are just charger holders. After that, we return to Sentai with Tokyuja. And you can see that this series is going to start a trend of toy exclusive legacy gimmicks that often are like Gashapon or Candy Class or come out in a massive legacy premium Bandai set. I will now only mention the DX toys. And they were Gonja, Shinkenja, Goseja, Gokaija, and GoBusters Resha. All inspired by the Kyoryuja Resha we actually seen in the crossover movie. Each one is a train based on the Red Senshi's mech. 
They're all really cute and I love them. Of course they can do many different combinations with Tokyo. For Toy Exclusive Resha we also have the Claw Resha, a tiger based redeco of Build Resha. It was included in one of the TV Kun magazines. Sadly since it's just a candy class toy, it can't fully extend like the normal Build Resha. Not gonna lie, I feel kinda sad we never see Claw Resha combined with Safario. Remember how I mentioned that Dino Charg was the peak of Power Rangers original Zord? Next up we have the Dino Charg Zords, aka peak of Bandai American. Well, welcome to Ninja Steel, which is absolutely depths of the barrel. We got the Sabertooth, Stegosaurus, and Gorilla Blast Zord. Sabertooth is a brick with a Gatling gun. Stegosaur at least can flip out the saw. Both of them are really uncreative. They're just bricks that kind of plop onto the Mega Zord, completely breaking its old design ideas and qualities. And the Gorilla Blast Zord, it doesn't even combine. It, it's just a turret that shouts out some darts. It feels disgusting. They gave us this, but they didn't really serve Hermaru, which was in the show. There were also these turret of the Ninja Steel Megazord that were added to the Auxiliary Zords. I don't have anything to say about them. With all the Zords done, now let's focus on the Sentai Max. First we have the toy exclusive Ryu Soldier combination, Ryu Sol Gattai Kishiryo Shine Raptor. It's the form Teramigo gets after he combines with the Shine Raptor, wielding its tail as a sword. We never see it in the show, but from what I remember, Bandai's YouTube channel showed it as a counterpart to Kishiryu Neptune's Shadow Raptor form. Ranger vs. Spot Ranger toy line. It did have a lot of toy exclusive dial fighters and trigger machines. Many of these were bonus to magazines, tickets, Christmas campaigns and lots of other stuff. Bandai for some reason really pushed a lot of promotion into this toy line. Sadly PR Wiki doesn't fully list these machines with having any special abilities, so maybe let's play with some head cannons, okay? We have the paint dial fighter, coded 210. I can imagine it turning VS Changer into like a Splatoon paint gun that helps the thieves cover cameras with gangs of paint. Prism dial fighter 263 may give the abilities to create giant crystals. I can imagine it helping with like laser traps. We have the Christmas Dial Fighter, 1225. Santa Christmas powers only make me think of like that one time the mechs wore Santa hats and Go Busters, so maybe it's something similar to this. Next up, we have the Special Dial Fighter, coded 999. It's all chromed and shiny. Maybe just a general power boost for the Lupins. After that, we have the Musical Dial Fighter, and it's kinda canon. Alongside its Pata Ranger counterpart, the Trigger Machine Music, we don't see the show itself, but we do see them in the VS Changers in the Lupat on Fearm promo that aired between episodes 21 and 23. I can imagine both machines having abilities to create distracting noises. After that we have the Trigger Machine Dog, a really cute car and my personal favorite Trigger Machine. In my head it has like abilities to track its target without fail. Trigger Machine Flash, probably works like a flashbang generating a giant light explosion. I like the detail of it having solar panels on top of it. Also we have Special Machine, it's just the normal Trigger Machine 1, but Chrome Silver. The TV Kun magazine also got two exclusive extracts. We have X-Train Chain coded 100, which probably would allow Noel to shoot out a massive chain link, and X-Train Jail. I can imagine it creating a massive boiler themed cage around the gangler. Next up we have Super Zenkai Vroom. Due to the way Zenkai is constructed, it, it can combine with either Juren or Vroom. But sadly we only saw the Juren combination in the show. I remember when a blog post came out about this form and Vroom's actor was like, oh, I may be disappointed it didn't happen in the show. But remember, you can do the Super Vroom form with the toys. Power Rangers Wiki also mentions the mini Pla Altes from Don Brothers. Sadly, I don't have a lot to say about them. They're just chibi versions of Red Senshi mechs that combine with Taro to give him walkie abilities that this situation needed. And oh boy, the Korean Georgia toy line is massive. Apparently, Georgia was mega popular in Korea, so much that Bandai apparently I keep pumping out toys. Almost half a decade later, Bandai Korea is still thinking up redecos and new combinations, so let's look at Cube Bolt Eagle, a redeco of Cube Eagle, represents the letter A. Cube Krampus, a orca based redeco of Cube Shark, is letter B. Cube Rabbit, a rabbit redeco of Cube Lion, the letter C. Together they form Titan King. C D A Titan King! Cube Mandrel, Redek of Cube Gorilla, letter F. Cube Cheetah, Redek of Cube Tiger, letter E. Cube Mammoth, Redek of Cube Elephant, letter D. Together they form Beast King.
and if combined with Titan King and Cube Kirin and Mogera, they form Beast Titan King. Next we have the Jurassic King. Yes, Jurassic King. Bandai Korea probably noticed how good robotic dinosaurs sell and they turn Geo the World's mechs into dinosaurs. Cube Rhino became Cube Trikera and is the letter I. Cube Crocodile is now Cube Mosa and letter G. Cube Wolf is Cube Stego and letter H. Bringing back all the early mechs gives us Animal Jurassic King. Okay, so what do you think they did with Cube Whale? They turned into a Brachiosaurus! They retold the head a bit and changed the blowhole into a neck and it's insane! Cube Brachio turns from a J lettered cube into Brachio Emperor and combines with the earlier cubes into the Beast Jurassic Brachio King. And like a year or two, they released even more mechs. Cube Octopus was really caught into Cube Ammonite that thanks to the some really creative paint job, where you're supposed to mistrust hope half of the tentacles into a shell, is the K cube. Also they gave the cube snow owl representing plus and cube penguin representing hash. You starting special symbols, you didn't finish the letters. What about L, M, N, No, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z? Jesus Christ, man, the curry is going to release this toys till I die, and it's all because Korean parents teach their kids to do this. <laughs> Thank you all for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, you know the rest, bye.